Alright, now we're moving into the Assault Rifles, and there are only two in this game. The first one is the CQBR Assault Rifle. A 556 by 45 millimeter assault rifle optimized by Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service for this operation. Its short length affords great mobility, even in urban settings. Alrighty. So you can only acquire this weapon with Carlos. It's in his inventory right at the start. However, Jill could acquire the infinite version, which is the next assault rifle I'll be going over. But anyway, here it is in the inventory. And this does come with custom parts. So I'll be reviewing it with every combination of the custom parts. Let's go over the parts real quick. First, you got the scope, a custom part for the CQBR assault rifle. Add sight to allow for more accurate shots. All right, so it's just like the dot sight for the G19 handgun. Next, you got the tactical grip, a custom part that greatly reduces recoil and gives each shot a more stable trajectory. All right, and finally, you got the dual magazine. It allows the use of two magazines at once for a maximum capacity of 64 rounds. Why does this seem totally unrealistic, though? <laughs> All right, so the location of the scope custom part for the CBQR assault rifle is located in the west office of the police station, and you must have Brad's ID card that you gather from his body after you defeat him before entering the police station with Carlos. So once you have that, it's in this briefcase that you use the card to open. Or storage case, I should say. There's the scope. So the location of the tactical grip custom part for the assault rifle is located in the hospital courtyard when you're playing as Carlos. You have to jump through one of the windows, specifically this one on this section of the second floor. You jump through this one, and be sure not to hop over that prematurely because the custom part is over here, placed on this uh, planter. Tactical grip. There you go. So the location of the dual magazine for the CBQR assault rifle is located in the nurse's station of the hospital. This section right here specifically. And it's actually inside that safe over there. The combination for that is just 9-3. And there you go. Dual magazine. So here's the assault rifle in game. Nice. So this is supposed to replace the M4A1 from the original Resident Evil 3, I presume. All right, so let's test it out. Partless. Now let's test the assault rifle with the scope attached. All right, doesn't seem to change its description. Well, let's just go ahead and fire it. Different crosshairs entirely. Now let's try just the tactical grip attached to the assault rifle. Barely changes the look of the weapon. but it is a heck of a lot more stable. Now let's try the assault rifle with just the dual magazine attached. So none of the parts change the description, it seems. All right, you can see the dual magazines right there. And yep, just extra ammo now. Now let's check the assault rifle with both the scope and grip. Alright, so this will be the most precise rifle we have. Now for the assault rifle with the scope and magazine. Now for the assault rifle with the grip and magazine. Now let's check the assault rifle out with all parts attached. Here's the full beast, right here. 
So, yeah, not a single thing changes its description, it seems. But that's okay. Like demonstrating the weapon here. You can clearly see the dual magazine and the scope. Tactical grip may be harder to recognize, but it's just a different grip altogether. It's not like an attached part. All right, let's test the full baby out. Just a quick mention for the CBQR assault rifle, Jill can acquire the regular one if you play in assisted mode. She starts with it as well as acquiring the handgun. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with zombies for the assault rifles. I'm just gonna go shot for shot to see how many shots it takes. So let's test it out on a zombie. All right, so I tested that on a variety of enemies, and a couple times I lost count of the shots, but this assault rifle's power is similar to that of a handgun bullet. So, I mean, it is an assault rifle after all, not a submachine gun, so it kind of makes sense, I guess. It took between 10 and 14 shots with the assault rifle to take down a zombie. So, similar firepower to all the handguns I've been testing, but of course with this thing, you can get all those shots off much faster, and you could really lay waste to enemies with this thing. It's good for crowd control, as with most assault rifles and submachine guns are. All right, now let's rage hell with a perfect dodge, or in Carlos's case, like a counterattack maneuver. <laughs> All right, so I nearly forgot to test this thing out with all the parts attached, so let's do that real quick. See if it makes a difference. The varial damage rate, it's not gonna matter that much. All right, so it took 14 shots regardless of the custom parts, so I was pretty much expecting that. But no worry, it was worth testing it out both with and without parts. All right, now let's do another perfect dodge maneuver with all the parts attached to it and then conclude this weapon. Woo! Just got decimated. Alrighty, that will officially conclude the CBQR assault rifle. Go, go! Come on, forget about it. Now for the next and last assault rifle, the Infinite CQBR assault rifle. This is literally the same exact assault rifle, other than it's infinite and it has gold plating on it, and it doesn't have custom parts that could be attached to it. So as you can see, the description is exactly the same and everything, but it does have a slightly different look. So let's just test it out. Almost forgot to mention the Infinite CBQR is acquired through the in-game store for 28,400 points. Here's Jill using it. Alright, so let's see if there's any damage difference with the Infinite Assault Rifle. Somewhat doubtful, but you never know.
All right, so I tested it on a few zombies as usual, and most of the zombies took only 12 shots. So yeah, I don't know if there's a difference between the infinite and the regular CBQR when it comes to damage. Damage is one of the most inconsistent variables in this game, so it's really hard to tell. But all I do know is I was getting a lot of 12 shotters there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the infinite CBQR assault rifle Probably has the same damage rate as the regular one. Alrighty then, that's gonna conclude the infinite CBQR assault rifle, as well as all assault rifles. Alright, now for this game's one and only shotgun, the M3 shotgun. 4 round capacity, 12 gauge pump action shotgun. It's great control and wide pellet spread make it a must have when fighting many foes. Alright, that's a pretty good description if I say so. So the first location of the shotgun is located in the subway office. In this one room, it's behind a metal grate that you must use bolt cutters in order to obtain. And there's the M3 shotgun. So if you happen to miss the shotgun at the subway office, you have another chance to acquire it once you make it to the dilapidated shelter right after the subway train crashes with Jill. Once you regain control of her after Carlos in the police station, you'll find the shotgun right on this chair here. Alright, and this weapon does come with custom parts as well. And let's check them out. First you got the semi-automatic barrel. A custom part for the M3 shotgun designed for semi-automatic fire allows more rapid firing while also reducing spread for greater power. Alright, next you got the tactical stock, a custom part that reduces recoil by increasing the gun stability, affording higher accuracy. Alright, and finally, the shell holder, a custom part that allows for faster reload speeds. And that's all it does. <laughs> Alright. So the location of the tactical stock for the shotgun is located on this clock puzzle. You have to have at least two of the gems available. It doesn't matter what order you place them in, it's always the second gem that unlocks the tactical stock. So here's the first gem, it just gives you a grenade. <laughs> and there's the tactical stock for the shotgun. If you're curious, the third gem just gives you a hip pouch. The location for the semi-automatic barrel for the shotgun is located in Kendo's gun shop. Over here on the shelf. Semi-auto barrel. And there you go. So the location of the shell holder custom part for the M3 shotgun is located in the underground storage. Specifically this one section where you first have to walk through a narrow portion of the stacks down there. Then you come up here and you go down with this little elevator and it will be behind in this little area here, this little nook inside of this briefcase and there's the shell holder and this is the most amount of shotgun ammo you could have in this game after stockpiling all of it and combining high grade gunpowders with regular gunpowder and having the crafting companion in my inventory this is what I came out to so, a total of 225 reserve ammo. Alright, so let's go ahead and test the M3 shotgun out, first with no parts attached. Alright, now let's test the shotgun with a semi-automatic barrel attached to it. And that is specifically what makes it a two-slotted weapon. Alright, let's test it out. So, yep, it's a semi-automatic shotgun now. Oh, and it reloads differently. That's interesting. Now let's test the shotgun with just the tactical stock attached. It, like, changed the shotgun completely. I believe the semi-automatic actually changed the amount of ammo it held, too. And that did change the description. I failed to see that, but that's okay. Let's test it out.
Now let's test the shotgun with just the shell holder attached to it. There you go. So this supposedly increases reload speed. That looked kind of funny in my opinion. Alright, now let's test the shotgun with both the semi-auto barrel and tactical stock attached. So yeah, just to demonstrate, the 6 round capacity 12 gauge pump action shotgun. It doesn't mention that the semi-auto barrel changed it to a semi-automatic shotgun. <laughs> Alright. Alright, now let's try it with the shell holder and semi-auto barrel attached. Nice. Alright, now for the shotgun with the tactical stock and shell holder attached only. And it's funny, that keeps it a one-slotted weapon. Alright, and now the full beast, all three parts attached. And it's still regarding it as an M3, but that's clearly an M4 at that point. So here's the full beast examined. Alright. Sick. So the M3 shotgun... We're gonna divert from zombies. I'm gonna test it both with and without parts on a Hunter Gamma. Close up. All right, that took six shotgun shells to defeat a Hunter Gamma, in standard mode anyway. And that's with no parts attached. Now I'm gonna go ahead and attach all the parts and let's see if it makes any difference. All right, so in that test, it only took five shotgun shells to defeat the Hunter Gamma. Now, I don't know if I just had better shots there or if all these custom parts do increase the firepower somewhat, but just look at it. All these custom parts, they change the shotgun completely. I think technically it changes it from an M3 to an M4. It would be nice to know if, yeah, that actually, there was a damage difference there. But with the variable damage rates that my tests have been doing all this time, can't tell, can't put a finger on it. Point is, I had a better test that one, so there's the takeaway. Alright guys, I'll just use regular zombies to show off perfect dodging with the shotgun. Alright, that's gonna go ahead and conclude the M3 shotgun.